Welcome to a special edition of Modern Art Blitz. We usually do this on Sundays, but our guest has flown in from New York City. Max Essinger could be here. He can only make his appearance here Wednesday. Welcome to Modern Art Blitz, your return engagement. Yes, it's a pleasure to uh, be here again. Be here Happy again. To be well, here. Uh, uh, Great to be in California. Yeah, so uh, speaking of California, you are a California native, moved yes. to uh, New York many, many years ago. Yes. What year? 1988? 88. Ooh. Okay, so, um, but look at this, a painting of yours in the Robert Irwin, near the Robert Irwin installation at the Museum of Contemporary Art, San Diego. Uh, this was very recently. The museum acquired one of your pieces. What, uh, what's, 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 the, uh, what's the artwork? Yes, um, so this is uh, next to the permanent uh, Irwin piece that uh, faces the Pacific Ocean. And uh, they had an exhibition last year of recent acquisitions. Uh, so it was great, it was up for three months. They acquired it last year, and they immediately put it up. Nice of them, nice of them. A and, lot of museums, um, goes right to the closet, you never see it. Right, right. And the great thing is, is that uh, they did something to my work, which in all the years, and of course I live with it, I make it, etc. I didn't even, um, they put it next to Erwin, and then positioned it in this whole light and space context. You don't consider yourself, or you, uh, uh, at least until this point, you never considered yourself a light and space artist. Or, or even working with those concerns. And, and then all of a sudden? Yeah, well look at that painting. I mean, it's about uh, transparency, it's about uh, reflections, it's about the uh, phenomenological space around the work. So yeah, but of course I was always uh, thinking about its materiality, the wood, the, the, the vinyl, the nails that are holding up the whole thing. Uh, and and, and uh, classic kind of a New York, LA conundrum there, right? Yeah, exactly. So now you, in addition to being here at the Museum of Contemporary Art San Diego, uh, uh, in, in the permanent collection now, as on display here, you studied in the 1980s in grad school at UC San Diego. Yeah. Now did that, uh, you know, that's, I mean, pretty cool that they're, they're um, there's a connection there. I mean, obviously for them, for their permanent collection. So, but you studied there. It's like a whole new faculty now. So, so, but, but um, that was back in the day when the department was ran by Alan Capro, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's like, you know, this connection to art history. You're not, you're not obviously doing happenings or anything, but you, you recall working with Alan? Absolutely. I mean, Alan was really uh, just a great, great figure, obviously in the history of art. And, um, but it was great to have this connection to the New York School and what he was doing, you know, in the 50s and the 60s, and just the generosity that, that he lent to me. I mean, I certainly wasn't doing something that you were, yeah, was, exactly. You're was not going making, to extend his legacy. So, uh, so, many, so many grad school teachers, it's like, oh, you gotta make art like them, or they try to get you to solve their problems. Uh, not to name any names, but well, yeah, there's, there's a lot out there that use the studio visit as a sort of way to work out their own ideas, a little, pressure, but Capra wasn't like that at all. Not at all. Uh, yeah. He really, uh, like I said, was just the most generous, the most open, gave me a lot of great advice about, you know, moving to New York and what it was like there. Obviously, he had been here for many, many decades, uh -huh. and he really loved California. Uh, so, would you, if you were in his position now, would, would, if you were a grad school teacher, would you advise a, a student to move to New York? Hmm. Well, I mean, certainly I would say, look, you're either going to go to California or you're going to go to New York. It's, it's one or the other. That's it? Well, I don't say that's it, but I mean, if you're, if you're saying ad advice if you're, to if move you're somewhere. Giving, if you're giving advice for a kid, you would just say like Los Angeles when you say California? Yeah. Okay, okay. Right. So not, definitely not the Bay Area. Hmm. But, but not yeah. unless you, you have a connection with Google. <laughs> well, you never know. Um, so uh, that could be the next art platform. Um, so, so did you ever have uh, any experience with uh, Robert Irwin here? No, no, no. You've never met the man? No, never met the man, but I mean, obviously he's... He still hangs out art. at the racetrack, you know? Excuse me? He still hangs out at the racetrack. Oh, so really? If you're, at, if you're at Del Mar, I yeah. hear you can, you can get a... You can get where a the surf meets the turf? Yes. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, now, fast forwarding, you... Uh, oh, oh, one last thing on San Diego, when you went to UC San Diego, Eleanor Anton was a uh, mentor of yours. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's really great. I mean, Eleanor Anton, David Anton, her husband was there, uh, Helen Newton Harrison, Manny Farber. Oh, Manny, now, yeah. uh, kind of obscure and yet somewhat 
kind of important in that whole scheme of things, right? That's right. Yeah. Well, what? Just the layers of art history. This oh. is this is sign language for the layers of art history. I got you. Okay. Um, this is well, layers of music history. Well, you but should you should definitely have an affinity with him because he was probably a lot of people consider him uh, one of the two or three greatest film critics, American film critics of the 20th century. Uh, Farber's legacy was definitely higher in the film critical film criticism world, but. His paintings are wonderful, by the way. Great, you know, great painter. Not, I mean, not everybody's cup of tea. He certainly, I mean, wasn't really a match with you, but he still had, you yeah. know, were you able to talk about criticality with him? We were able to talk about just how to get stuff on the surface and believe in it. And that was it. I mean, it sounds really cliched, but that, that was. So moving on, you're, you're, you're in San Diego here, but we've, we've got a lot of art to show. Uh, we have some newer paintings of yours. We don't have to. We don't have to do a whole narrative here. Now, is this a new painting? Yes. What the twenty seventeen? Yes. Okay. So, um, how many can we, we got? One, two, three, four, five, five. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it's a uh, raw canvas, steel raw canvas, clear vinyl, and then uh, raw canvas, and it's all uh, oil paint, and it all makes up a painting called Red. It's about six feet by eight feet wide, and um, this is going to be part of a new. Uh, body of work that I'm going to be exhibiting in September in New York, uh, in Brooklyn, where I moved, uh, at a gallery called Norter Mar, uh, that's run by Jason Andrew, who did all these great things uh, to establish the Bushwick art scene in Brooklyn, and now he's moved over to another neighborhood called Cypress Hills, and he's doing a lot of great stuff, and um, so I'm looking forward to Doing, and we're going to be doing a catalog too, so it's going to be You lived great. in Manhattan. You were like the booster for Manhattan for a lot of uh, L.A. people who, you know, it, it, the dialogue's changed a little since the 80s, uh, whereas, you know, if somebody lives in L.A., they're in one of the art capitals, London, Hong Kong, maybe the others, but uh, New York, obviously, still the capital, but it's a little less insecurity living in Los Angeles now, maybe than any time in history, or, or art history at least. So. Um, when you moved to Manhattan, though, you would have never imagined to live in Brooklyn, did you? Did it ever, did it ever stoke your imagination? What would well, it be like to live in Brooklyn? I mean, that's, listen, Manhattan, it's not even, it's no artists live there except for Jeff Koons and, you know. Really? Richard Serra. Okay, I okay. mean, yeah, I'm, I'm serious. We're gonna there. take a census, but, but that's happening yeah. in a lot of places. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of so urban centers it's are no, losing, are I mean, losing. Look, it's, it is great because it's so, close to everything, the museums, the galleries, just the vibe. But at a certain point, uh, you want to be a, a homeowner. So, so <laughs> living in Brooklyn, how often do you visit Manhattan? Once a month? No. <laughs> More than Like that. three times a week. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. okay, okay. So there's business to three do. Three times and, a week. And so, so now the galleries, uh, are the galleries moving out of Bushwick or are there just new galleries? There's, there's new galleries, new galleries and um, I mean, it's, look, the, the, the art scene is not the same as when I first got there. I mean, I knew pretty much every gallery and every artist. Back in and, the 80s. Yeah, and now it's, it's, it's insane. It really is. How many galleries are there in New York right now? I, I don't you know. couldn't even count. I, I, I saw a map and it, my jaw hit the ground because because where, like, for example, the Lower East Side right now has more commercial galleries than all of Los Angeles. I mean, all of Southern California, really? even. Yeah, the Lower East Side. It's like it, you you look on a map and there's just dots everywhere. I mean, it's yeah. it's and, and LA's never been bigger. There's never been more galleries here, and yet New York, it's it's like it's like the flood, you know. Yeah, but then you have a lot of galleries closing because of. Uh many many issues there's a lot of issues with galleries closing but then you have a bunch opening up it's i mean and it is a false economy it's not like they open up and then have to have a meritocracy of specific amount of sales to to maintain the thing i mean i think a lot of people do burn out after a while but um but you know it's people like i'm gonna do an you know like i'm gonna do a gallery a lot of people it's like i'm gonna have a band you know it's you're not thinking of the the economic return on the band might be <laughs> right. you know lo, lo, far from here you've never ran a gallery though or artist space none of that no no, no. you've just i mean i worked in a gallery where did you work uh, <laughs> uh i know the answer to this one yes i worked at a gallery that was in soho uh and um, in the early 90s in the early 90s yeah for five years I was like the uh, just the director. Yeah, I mean informally because the the the, the owner, owner of the gallery was the, was the director. But do you want to say the name? I, uh, yeah, Tomoko Ligori Gallery. Is to, Probably, it, nobody even remembers this. Hi, Tomoko. She's still around. 
Um, She's still in New I York? haven't talked to her in over 20 years, but... Really? Yeah. No, oh, I wow. haven't. Um, but she apparently is in uh, Woodstock, I heard. Check fa uh, if it, would, would somebody check Facebook and find tomorrow uh, and say teaching that... Teaching yoga. Say that, she's teaching yoga? Yeah. Okay, well, Max and Matt say hi. So yeah. Tomoka was cool. So, well, we got a lot of art here. If you guys want to oh. just keep rotating it, uh, you've got a lot of new paintings. You've been busy. Yeah. How much, how much uh, studio time, how many hours in the studio a week? Oh, easily like 50, 60. 50 to 60 hours yeah. a week. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. What are we looking at here? Uh, this is a multi-panel uh, painting uh, wood and steel, stainless steel. Stainless steel at the top blue, stainless steel in the middle blue, and stainless steel at the uh, bottom blue. And the white panels are a painted uh, wood. So, so uh, how big is this? This is about, uh, I believe it's about six feet or maybe five feet tall, five feet tall by uh, two feet wide. Anthropomorphic almost? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Are you Definitely. addressing? Uh, no. No? <laughs> no. No, you know what? Who knows? I have no idea. But you see the relationship between the um, shirt. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Wait, okay, well, where is it? Oh, there, there it is. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. It's, it's, you got to learn. It's not a mirror. <laughs> right. <laughs> the green. We're looking at a monitor and it's not a mirror. So <laughs> right. half the time I'll be like, tell me about this painting. <laughs> so, okay. Do the opposite. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. So, so uh, and this is again, 2017. Yes. And this is going to be in your September show. Yeah. How big is the space? Um, the space is intimate, um, but you know, whatever, whatever is not going to be in the show will be in the catalog. So, you know, That's um, almost as we'll important see. these days. We'll yeah. see. Because it's not just about the space. It's also about how everything works in the space. So uh, you want the best looking show. Exactly. Regardless exactly. of how much. Some artists, it's like, everything I did, I have to put in this show. And no. It's like, oh, God. Do you right. want a good looking show? Or do you want everything you've ever done? Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. So okay. I'm looking forward to it. And, and, you know, I think that the work has evolved uh, from the previous concerns. And as you said uh, earlier to me, it looks like you're using more paint than you have before. And I, you were pretty much known for not putting a lot of paint on, and, and there's more paint here than it's all covered except for except for um, the piece you know, of steel at the top. The, yeah, the steel there, and then down there at the very bottom, right? You yeah. have the reveal okay. of the uh, of the surface. So. If this is the first time our audience is experiencing your art, let me tell you, for Max. This is a lot of paint. He's <laughs> slapping that on. So, so uh, why? Why do you think you're using more paint? You've had a lot well, of raw canvas pieces over yeah. the years. Um, I think um, it's just you, you want to see what else you can do, how things can look different. Uh, it's going to make the impact of those areas that aren't painted even more dramatic, okay, and subtle. And, and I'm... I'm, uh, I'm interested in that too. I, I've, I've been to a few studios here in town and seen some amazing work uh, from certain artists like uh, Lee's Crawl. She's showing at Dank Gallery right now. Yes, right yeah. now. I saw that. I, I saw her work and I immediately said, who is this? And I got in touch with her. She was at the opening and, and um, but there's a subtlety there that that's just really breathtaking she's really great and then also um i finally got to meet uh roy thurston oh roy's uh, great yeah 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 his studio's near my house did you yeah, know yeah, his, yeah. actually his studios are near the drone box his art studio is very near the drone box wow. studio i might have to get him on as a guest so a shout out to those two guys because uh lee's and uh roy because i had a great time so a lot's yeah. happening here in la have you ever considered um moving to los Angeles? moving to the left coast. Well, you, you and as a native, I mean, you. Well, you know. you know, I've been gone almost 30 years, but hey, who knows? Who knows what the future holds? I mean, uh, I just consider you to be a New Yorker now. I, I think it would be weird having you around well, all the time. Well, I, I understand that. Can you imagine it being a guest on Modern Art Blitz every week? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> however, uh, if you're if you want to buy my house in Brooklyn for the right price. You know. How much is a house in Brooklyn now? Just out of curiosity. Well, okay. You're in, in Cypress Park? Cypress Hills. Cypress Hills, okay. Um, you know, a house there is about seven fifty, eight hundred. What's up, man? There's, there's houses here for seven fifty, eight hundred. dollars Yeah. Right? Is it, what, what, what would you compare the L.A. neighborhood of S Cypress Hills? Oh, that's a great question. What neighborhood? Am, if um, I'm in L.A., where, where is the Cypress Hills of L.A.? Okay. Great question. Is, that's why they pay you the big bucks. You know, Isn't drone it? box. I'm I'm actually near 
There's Sally Mullins. Uh, they, she gets more. She gets paid more than Nolan and Louis Silverstein, who own Dronebox. And I'm actually I'm af after there on the pay scale. That's We're terrific. paid based on ratings. Okay. So, are you Are you ready for my answer? Yes. I'm going to look right into the camera, and I'm going to say that um, I would say that Cypress Hills 2017 is Lincoln Heights. Ah. To wait. 2013. Oh. But man, 800,000 would get you like two houses in. in nah, uh, not right now. Not right now? Okay, nah. okay, okay, okay. I'm not looking to buy, so I don't know. Okay. Now, now, now listen, you could get a unrenovated single family house in that neighborhood for 500. Yeah? Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. So you put some work into yours, you're gonna sell the house and move back to the I'm not gonna eventually. do that. I didn't no. say I was gonna he, do that. He's, he's, the flag is planted. Uh, we'll see. But, but certainly, I mean, there's a lot to talk about in terms of what's happening in these places, in these cultural capitals of Los Angeles, of New York, and, and how that's affected by everything else. I mean, I went to an art opening the other night okay. uh, at um, Ibid? Ibid Gallery. Ibid Gallery. And, you know, there were pickets outside. They were picketing? Yeah. And there, was picketing? and there wasn't even a Carl Andre exhibition. <laughs> oh, boom. Okay. So what, what were they picketing? The well, very existence of the galleries, yeah, yes? Yeah, By the way, you see that nice painting there? Yeah. That's kind of different, isn't it? For you, this is like, this is like, I can't even say abstract expressionism. This is like, <laughs> you know, you've gone Baroque. Well, but this you notice, your, your you, notice the, uh, you notice the tip of the hat to uh, the great El master. Ellsworth Kelly. Well, no, or, or, or just the fact that it's red, yellow, and blue. Oh, well, that's so, uh, Mondrian. And, and uh, Barnett Newman. Thank you. Well, so, see, it's great to have Matt around. Anyway. That'd be good for something. Um, hey, my Next shirt, slide, please. My shirt, actually. If I was wearing a green shirt on the green screen, it would actually go with this. What's the title of this? Uh, red, yellow, blue. Well, there's a lot more gray. Is that gray? No, white? that's just the white ground of the uh, white ground. Gesso. wood. Gesso? Wood, Gesso? Yeah. No. Gesso on panel? No. It's, white paint. It's, it's the actual panel as... It, yes, Gesso. I, I actually, I give that to you. It's Gesso. It is Gesso. Yeah. And so, uh, the, are we using acrylic paint here? Uh, no, this is oil on, on, it's on all wood. Oil. Wow, all the paintings are oil on. Ooh, that's a on, lot yeah. of fucking oil paint. Yeah. What, what brand of oil paint do you want to give a plug? I to? do not want to give a plug because it, it always, I always change it up. Some of it is actually um, sign paint. You know, it varies. Okay. So mm -hmm. I don't want to get into uh, one, you know, one shot uh, endorsement here or, you know. Are you just one of those artists who just doesn't want to give away your secrets? Like, I don't want anyone to know that I use this paint that works really well. Well. If, if you mean if there was collusion between me and the paint companies? <laughs> there, there's collusion. Last week, yeah, you said there was no collusion. This week, you're saying, who cares if there was collusion? <laughs> so what do you think of all the collusion going on in the political scene these days? Uh, you you want to you wanna go there already? Do I want to go there already? Let's look at well, some more art. Yeah, let's look at <laughs> some more art. <laughs> let's, let's see what else you brought here, because we've got a lot of this new Baroque... Uh, ah! A triangle? This next, is, this next. This is Baroque. This next. is beyond Baroque. <laughs> All right. Um, that's, uh, I like the orange here. What? what yeah, it, that's just, that's a really simple, that's as simple as it how gets. How big is this piece? How, oh. Oh, back, 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 back. Sorry, sorry. Okay. How big is this piece? This is not a big piece. This is uh, uh, like 26 by 49. A lot of people don't have a wall that big, but okay. How many panels? Four panels? Yeah. Two squares? Two rectangles? Okay. And it's title? Orange. Not triangle? Just orange? No, orange. Just orange. No orange. triangle inside. Whatever color okay. it is. Okay. Let's go on. You guys, you're, you, you, we're, we're, the next one, we already saw a little peek of it. Let's see, let's see the whole thing, if we, if we may. Maestro? Ah. Now, that's a little different. That is all... Oh, boy, Max. You're really getting Baroque on us here. Uh, yeah. tell, tell me about the lavender. Yeah, kind of a periwinkle blue lavender. Oh, periwinkle. Um, wow. Yeah, that's just... Uh, Four panels uh, and um, raw canvas. No, that's yep. again a wood white. panel. On, on, but oh, okay. So so you got what happened to your raw canvas fetish? You'll see some. Okay, okay, okay. Just man. Did you were you not paying attention to the first? Image? I saw that. I thought that was goodbye raw canvas. You painted no. over most of it and then left it left it to the, to the wild here. So S you know, speaking of raw canvas, yeah. Um, I I've been. I've been seeing some artists, and I've also uh, been seeing some art. And I went to a gallery called uh, 
Honor Fraser. Honor Fraser, oh wait, um, they have up right now probably the master of the raw canvas painting, Morris Lewis. We're talking 1960, 61 paintings. Uh, pretty amazing show, yeah? Yeah, I was completely knocked out and blown away. I mean, I think Lewis, and nobody, I mean, no one would say this today, but I think he ranks there with Pollock and Newman and Kelly, uh, you know, in the pantheon of American abstract painters. Absolutely. Really? I'm, I'm, I'm actually... I put him above, I put him above Rothko, I put him above, you know, yeah. Yeah, I, I put him above Clifford Still. I know that's heresy. That's how much I think um, Morris Lewis. Plus, you know, it, it, it actually, I get choked up when I think about Lewis. Because he died so young? Yeah, it's kind 49. Of a, I mean, I don't, not to get romantic here, but... but he Sometimes I am a romantic. 49 years yeah. old. Wow, that's older than me. But um, It's a little older than me, believe it or not. I don't believe that for a minute. Have you had any work done yet? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> hey, so, so uh, the thing about Morris Lewis, though, when you're thinking about, he was using all that turpentine to thin, thin the paint. Yes. Chain smoking in a very unventilated... Now, well, painters use the mask. Do you wear a mask in the studio? A uh, ventilating yeah. mask? Sure, and sure. But you know what's interesting about... Um, he was the first one to use, or one of the first to use, those Bocour acrylic paints. But they were still, the medium was still turpentine, not water. Oh my God. Yeah. But it, so, but it had an effect, the, the, the yeah. effect he got with those veils, yeah. you know? Are you the, a fan of the veils that cover up most of the color? You know, it's funny, no one would ever think that I'm a fan of the veils, but I think the veils are the, among the most mysterious, most uh, magical works of art anybody ever uh, made. Wow. Yeah. yeah, when you put him in the Pantheon... I'm big on Lewis. When, well, when, 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 you're, when, you're, when you put him on the Pantheon with Pollock, I, I could at least entertain that idea, but then you brought in Ellsworth Kelly, and I actually don't have as high esteem for Ellsworth Kelly as you do. Is there anything you could defend about Ellsworth Kelly to me? I mean, g give, me, give me your 30-second, why is Ellsworth Kelly, you know... Well, why uh, is he in the Pantheon? For the opposite of Lewis, for the longevity... Um, and, um, I mean, he was really toiling, you know, in Paris in the 40s and the 50s. And, you know, he was developing this very, very stripped down language that... Oft imitated. Yes, yes. Rare, not, not ever yeah. topped. I've just... Uh, okay, but back to oh. your work. Yeah. Tell, me, tell me about uh, uh, this. This is piece. a very classic It's, it's funny because you, of... you just mentioned Rothko, and this actually has a kind of Rothko composition. Unintentional? Yes, okay. very unintentional. Okay, I'm good. I don't want you. Um, this I is don't want a, fighting words. So here. you have this stack of um, undulating uh, white canvases, one on top, one the second panel, and then you have um, this steel panel in the middle that's painted uh, red up until you know you get to the corners or the sides, I should say, and then you have two more. Uh, uh, How does the paint take on that aluminum? Is it aluminum? Yeah, steel it's or steel. Aluminum? Yeah, it's it steel or aluminum. Stainless steel. And the the paint it takes yeah. paint really yeah. well. Yeah. Okay. If you put enough of you know you sand the uh, the surface, ah. prime it. Yeah, it's okay. no problem. You're giving away secrets now. I'm I'm not here to give away or or collude with anyone. <laughs> no collusion. No collusion. No collusion. So, can we can we continue the slide show? <clears throat> This is this is a nice piece. How, how big is this piece? Uh, that's about uh, five feet five by feet square. three feet. Okay, this was when you were here last year. Yes. You were having a solo show at Mocha Tucson. Right. Um, the show wrapped up. How'd it go? It was really great. Um, just an amazing experience. The show was curated by Jocko Wayland, and um, the staff there was just it's really great to work with a an institution because they have a preparator and they have this whole staff of people that is uh very very accommodating to what you're trying to do and um and you just have to point and oh, i really? actually yeah that's i, your, I enjoy your call? i enjoy pointing um, <laughs> do you do it so well <laughs> right over there <laughs> right there put it there put right. that one there no wait Put that one there and that one there. Yeah, exactly. Is that that's the exactly the, probably every artist's goal. And um, we got a really great local review there in that town of Tucson, which was actually one of the best things anyone's ever written about me. Like really insightful. Uh, I have to. I have to. I, I should contact her 
actually be on the writer. That. Yeah, the writer. So, really so uh, interesting that yeah, you go you go all the way to Tucson, you end up getting a review worthy of, of New York City, right? Yeah. Well. So okay. Not well, everything about New York is is cracked up to be. Well, we, you know what? We're going to talk a little more about New York versus LA. We're going to talk a little more about collusion. We're going to talk a little more about boycotts and protests. Uh, we're going to take just a little break for a commercial here. And we'll be right back with part two of my Modern Art Blitz re-interview of the painter Max Estinger. So don't go away. Your mind's full of delusion. 